Oh hoy, it's me, Zand, and welcome back to another episode of Digi Daily. So today's gonna be a kind of chill update episode. Nothing crazy is going on because we're kind of like in the middle of like not in the middle, but we're like nearing the end of this run. Um, what the heck happened there? There's a little dent in there. Um, we're like nearing the end of this run, so I want it to kind of fully play out before we do another run. Oh. Aw, oh, they died. They died. Dang it, I thought he was gonna still be alive. Um, do I do it now, or do I wait? I don't know. Hmm. New run today, or new run tomorrow? So I'm a little worried. Because if I start a new run, I'll just wait. I'll just wait. <laughs> Sorry, but I don't want to uh, miss the X3 group patch, which is happening soon. All right, considering May 1st is the first day, I just don't want to be like in between a run when that happens, so we're going to have to make a sacrifice again. Uh, who would it be? All right. Well, definitely be Crusader Mon on here. No offense, Crusader Mon. I like it, just not that much. I know a lot of people are real big fans with the Crusader Mon, you know. Not really me, so I'll sacrifice her. And on here, it'd have to be Slipe Mon, which sucks. But hey, 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 hey. It is what it is. Oh, yeah. Started at that exact right time. That's what I like. Uh, so I guess today won't be a chill episode. Because I'll be taking care of these two, uh, which usually is uh, not too bad, but you know how these are sometimes. Also, good thing we do have a traded egg, so not like that really does much nowadays, because you're practically guaranteed evolutions. But I mean, hey, it's still nice. It's all sparkly. It's cute. I don't think I've shown off a traded egg on this yet. Um, so yeah, this time for sure. We are going to go for Lopmon and freaking Terriermon. I want them. I've wanted them. It's the main reason why I got these devices, if I'm being honest. So hopefully we can get them. It requires zero care mistakes, zero effort. That's all I got to do. Just not mess up. Can I do that? Is the hardest question I think I've had to answer in a while. All right, so. There we go, got the two blash. The two little boys, look at him. All right, so I will just keep them to the side. For now, let's focus on Holy Dramon. Holy Dramon, uh, Sneaks mentioned that uh, I might actually need 100 battles here at this evolution, which is a Big, big problem, but I'm trying to rectify that as we speak. As you can see, we have 192 battles, 70% win ratio. Win ratio doesn't really matter. It's just the amount of battles you do. So I was at like 115 when, or around 115 when I got to this evolution. So that means I will need probably around 215. So we're, we're almost there. So that's what today's episode is going to be. Just a gauntlet. We still have Greymon here. Uh, I don't know how he's uh, still here, but he is. So, you know, I thank him for that because he is proving to be very useful. Now, of course, yes, I do have the Digivice Helper. So, like, if I was in really, you know, I, I really needed wins, I could do that. But I, I don't really like using the Digivice Helper for that. Like, if I only had one mini, then, like, yeah, I wouldn't mind. But I have two, and this one's still alive. And I also still have the XL, too, and that is a Mega... This is a mega, so it's a, a bit more fair. You know, I, I don't find, you know, uh, that I, I don't think I need much use for it. There's also the issue um, that um, someone ran into when they were running their mini during the mini hatch is um, their Digivice Helper froze their mini. And if this thing freezes, this whole run is down the drain because these don't have save functions. These are like, you know, the old school type devices where you know you have them you have them uh until the battery runs out if the battery runs out they're gone kaput 
you ain't loading that back. And I don't want that to happen. Because uh, we made it this far, and like I said, I'm, I feel so accomplished. Like, once Holy Dramon hits Loose Mon Satan mode, I'm going to try to keep him for as long as I can, if I'm being honest. Because, like I said, that's a huge accomplishment. Like, I don't know many people... I haven't seen many videos of people showing off, like, the Megas and the Super Megas on the minis. Because they're... I wouldn't say they're hard... But they are a little challenging for sure. They're on the, I'd say they're they're like at the level of like the classic pendulums and the classic V pets as far as difficulty, um, which especially you know nowadays, fairly difficult. You know, I would say these are slightly easier though at the same time because like the most difficult thing about these devices is the the win ratio and the evolution. Um, percentages that's the like the thing i'll kind of screw you over the most and that's the thing i'll screw you over the most on the older devices too um this device has a lot of things that make it easier where training apparently counts no matter what like if you completely botch training apparently it'll still count towards uh training whereas on the pendulum and every v pet after the first one the version one it if you don't get the, like, if you don't win at the game, the training game, you don't get the point for training. So you could waste a lot of time and a lot of DP training and, like, not doing well enough. Which uh, will send you to a, you know, one of the lines that you might not be trying to get if you're trying to get the top line. This device training apparently counts whether you get it right or wrong. And I think that is the case because I didn't... I wasn't doing flawless training every single time, and I still got the top line for both of these. Um, so, I guess that does count. And then there's also, of course, the fact that um, they don't really ask for much. There's no strength meter from what I have seen. I don't really know what feeding them vitamins does on this device. I don't think it does anything, if I'm being honest. It might maybe raise their strength stat. Maybe it's like the the V-Pets where it raises their strength stat at the cost of uh, them taking more damage. I don't know. <laughs> um, the only thing you really have to look out for is keep them fed. You can't overfeed them, which is, again, a really good thing. And keep an eye on them when they go to bed, because that will give you a care mistake. Although, I totally got two care mistakes with Magna Andromon when he went to sleep. I didn't put it to sleep immediately. So either, either when they go to sleep, you have a 30 minute timer to put them to bed, or, or yeah, that has to be it, because it was like 9.27, it was like 9.17 one night, and 9.27 the other night, and I was like, oh crap, they're not going to evolve, like I messed up, and they evolved, as, I mean, as you can see, we have Holy Angemon, so it ended up working out in the end, I don't know how, again, I'm going to assume maybe the the wait time is like 30 minutes, which is usually the case with older devices. Um, but yeah, that's really all you have to worry about. Just like keep them fed. If they refuse feeding, that means they're full. You know, do a bunch of battles, which isn't too hard if you have two. If you don't have two, then that's where you get the kind of a... Uh, you start to run into some issues. If you have a DCOM, you could ask someone for a code. And if you have the Digivice Helper, you can use that. But keep in mind that, again... There's a, there's a chance, even if it's like 0 0.001, there's a chance it could freeze your device. And that would completely throw your run into the toilet. I really wish the three-prong devices weren't so expensive. Like the, the XL, fairly expensive, although it is lowering in price from what I have seen. The price for the XL seems to have lowered a bit. It seems to be staying around 80 even in package, some people I've seen get it for like 80 or $90, which I think is fair for an in-package device that's, you know, a little hard to come by. 80 is around the price we usually pay for new devices from Premium Bandai anyway, so I wouldn't say that's too bad of a price. Um, the minis on, you know, if you're getting them from a middleman, they're not too expensive. There are, is, there was a eBay listing I saw of a a version 1 in package for around $60, and honestly, while that does sound a bit steep, um, after paying, if I just bought this by itself, 
after paying some of the fees from from Japan, it would have cost around that much. Um, but that's why you, if you're if you're using a middleman, you're you gotta buy multiple stuff so that you can kind of like justify the fees. Because if you just buy one thing, the fees they're just you know there's a lot because you gotta pay for it to get to them and then for them to get to you and then other stuff. But if you're getting multiple things, the, you know they consolidate it all in one box, so you're really just paying at that point for it to get to you. Um, so yeah. What I'm trying to say is, the problem with three-pronged devices for the longest time is that they were kind of unaccessible to most people that weren't ready to drop big money. I think the only three-pronged device that's still super expensive is the Pendulum X, although I've seen a lot of people get lucky with those lately. I haven't yet. I, I, I'm always on the lookout for a Pen X. I know a lot of people would like to see me run a Pen X, and I would too, because I do have a D-Cyber, which is literally a reshelled Pendulum X uh, with a lot more functionality and features, but it's still cool to have the original. I like that form factor that the original has, and you know, I would I would like another three prong device because now I'm three pronging it up. I went from none to having the XL to having these two, so now I would like to fill out the collection more. I'd like to get the Digivice IC, the Japanese one, because that has a three prong connector. I'd like to get the Pendulum X, because that also has a three-prong, and that's pretty much every three-prong device, if I'm not mistaken. There weren't many, and I don't really know what drove them to do this, to start that. I, I really don't. I'm happy that, uh, you know, new devices that they've been releasing still have the two-prongs, because it just makes more sense. It's like, the three-prong devices don't... I, I don't think they send more information any more than... A modern two prong does now because they've i guess when you think about it they've, they've probably found out a way to consolidate data better too i mean they're the way that we can kind of compress data nowadays is kind of crazy so it could be that but um i still think this is a major misstep on bandai's part because the biggest thing and the coolest thing about having a big collection of these when well, not these specifically but you know these is the fact that most of them if not all really most of them there's there's some outliers most of them connect to each other to this day i can connect a brand new digimon x3 to my d2 that's crazy that's like absolutely insane that you can connect something from 2000 to something from 2020 it's a 20 year gap between those two devices and they still connect they're still 100 100 percent compatible with each other and I find that super cool. Like that's, I think, the best thing about the two prong system. Whereas the three, the three prong system, there's, while they are all compatible with each other at least, except for the Cross Wars Mini, and I don't get that. But other, they all connect to each other. They all, um, you know, they all work with each other, and it's cool. But there's a, a, a smaller pool of devices you can connect to when you have a three prong device, and most of the devices in that pool are all fairly expensive because well i don't know anymore <laughs> um they were they held their price for a while because back in the day they were the most recent devices to come out and you know bandai had slowed down on releasing stuff for digimon so that made sense but uh the fact that you know i mean, i guess i don't know the pen x has always had a big price point on it it has dropped i will say that i've, I've seen Pendulum X is in box for 115, whereas back in the day I used to see something out of the box for like 300. So slowly but surely they're they're going down in price because the demand for them has lowered. Because the demand now is with like the X3s, the X2s, all the classic. Um, well, not really classic, but you know what I mean. Like the these newer devices, they're all kind of lowering. The price of a lot of e-pets all across the board which i'm really happy about especially the biggest thing i think that broke the back so to speak of i guess i don't know the v-pet economy if you want to say it like that uh the biggest one was for sure the english 20th that like completely like leveled the playing field in my opinion and i'm so happy for that because the 20ths cost a lot. Alright, so we're almost there here. Let's check on the two babies. I'm pretty sure they want something by now. What do you want? Yeah. Oh my god. 
So not only did they evolve, but uh, they pooped everywhere. E oh God, four at the same time? Jeez. <clears throat> All right, Pokemon. Uh, jeez. All right. Well, we need a couple more battles. Not on you. A couple more battles on you, and uh, we should be good enough, good to go for Loose Mon Satan mode. So. I'm going to call it a day here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, thanks for listening to me rant and ramble about V-Pets and the V-Pet economy. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, I am happy that things are starting to become more affordable. The The biggest things that I want to see like drop exponentially in value is the 15th. I know a lot of people in the fandom, myself included, that really, really want... A 15th device or the 15th devices in general and just can't afford them because they're just so expensive so that's definitely the biggest thing I'd say that like I would hope to drop in price especially considering that you can get a better deal on the classic devices than you can on the 15th which I think is kind of ridiculous you think because they're older they would be worth more but you know the 15th did pack more things into them so i can see why they are so expensive but like i paid for my d arc ultimate the gold one you know the one that used to go for a lot of money i i paid like 60 dollars for that whereas getting a d arc 15th would cost me somewhere around the 300 to 400 dollar range which again is like crazy so hopefully bandai of america will release like a 15th digivice um i I doubt, but it'd be cool if they did. But yeah, I'm gonna go. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, huge shout out to my patrons. And I will see you guys tomorrow. No, I did not see Digimon Adventure yet. Because as, as I'm recording this, it has not come out yet. It's gonna come out tonight, like around like 11, I think, comes out on the East Coast. So when I watch that tonight, I will give a review of it tomorrow. So look forward to that and look forward to more episodes and look forward to hopefully Loose Mon Satan mode and Terrymon and Lovemon. So we'll see. Alright. Peace. Hope.